law of the land in America that every email front end provider required KYC from its users. Yeah. Because under the justification that we do not want people sending information back and forth with terrorists. Yep. Where would you so, stand on that position? Oh, I'd be strongly against that position. Can I talk to you about something? Yeah, we talked about it. I got another 10 years left, maybe 15. Not bad, this is big. You know, in practice, the standard was, do we feel okay about this from a financial perspective? Like, does this look at least mediocre? Like, like not a huge loss in expectation, maybe gain in expectation, hopefully, maybe not, was sort of the bar that something had to cross in order for us to feel comfortable. Like I was saying, it's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. Yeah, I don't think so. And I'm never wrong about this stuff. Never. FTX's multi-billion dollar collapse rocked the crypto industry and led for calls of reform. Bankman-Fried could face more than 100 years in prison. Sam Bankman-Fried, who once ran one of the world's largest cryptocurrency exchanges, FTX. Guilty in his closely watched fraud trial. In all seven counts of fraud and conspiracy. Sam, everybody wants to know about the guy that is under 30 and that has achieved so many things that you have already. Up applying to and, and going to MIT, um, you know, partially because it seemed like a place where I'd find other people like myself. I, I suppose you don't trade very much nowadays. You trade FTX, maybe. <laughs> yep. Uh, Sam, what's the formula for the meteor growth of FTX? Innovation, support. Please tell us Brazilians the highlights about your exchange FTX besides the fact that it is regulated in 49 states of the US is that right? Right. Yep. So, you know, basic answer here is you know, I think it's worth thinking as much about our weaknesses as our strengths. Um when we sort of go through it, what's our biggest strength? Our strength has always been product. That's been what our calling card has been. That's where we came from. And that's why we founded it in the first place was we just looked at the space and we're like, this is a mess and we can do better. We can build a better product, a more compelling product, a more coherent product than what we see. That's why we founded FTX. And then you can ask, okay, well, you know, why, if your product really is better, right? Then why, why, why does anyone use anything else? And, you know, there's whatever, there's pros and cons to everything, but more so than anything else, we were late to the game. You know, FTX was founded in mid-2019. And um, if you kind of rank all exchanges by, you know, volume, you have to get down to number 50 or something to find an exchange founded after FTX. So, you know, all of our biggest competitors were founded years before we were. And that means that they had a lot of time to build up users and to build up a following. And, um, and and a brand and, and, and you know, name recognition. And so the hardest thing for us about this is, you know, basically like, uh, how do we get users? How do we get people to know about FTX to try it out in the first place? And the easiest thing is that, you know, we think we have a really compelling product. And so what that means in the end, basically, is that, you know, we do quite well amongst the extremely highly engaged users in the crypto ecosystem, you know, against people who are spending hours a day thinking about crypto, we have a really strong brand, we're really well known. Um, and uh, I, I, and you know, we're growing quite quickly. And so, you know, our, our strength comes in our product and the highly engaged users who try us out and care a lot about the product. And our weakness comes in the, the long tail of unengaged users um, who just use whatever they find. And so, you know, the core growth roadmap, the easiest one for us, is continuing to grow amongst these highly engaged users. You know, we, we've been growing quickly, but there, there's another factor of five to 10 left that we can go there. Um, and then, you know, the secondary part of this is how do we build out a brand and, you know, name recognition and trust in the way that some of the older exchanges have uh, to be able to really service the, uh, you know, the less engaged users as well. I suppose you don't trade very much nowadays. You trade FTX, maybe. <laughs> yep. But was it with stops or without stops when you traded? 
in Alameda, for instance, when you uh, when you take care of the positions, the huge positions that you have. Stop losses. I think those aren't necessarily a great risk management tool because uh, they often sort of lead to you being closed out of your position in relatively low liquidity situations and losing to that. Uh, kind of like exacerbating, you know, momentum from liquidations and things like that. Um, yeah, we definitely have like sort of risk limits, though, where, you know, for any given position we're going to put on, we'll think about, you know, what's the size of our overall book? You know, what's the size of this, you know, the market cap of this coin? What's kind of like the max risk we want to take on this position? Pois é, o Sam provavelmente primeiro perdeu um pouco de dinheiro. Um miserê qualquer, 100 milhões de dólares. Aí, ele tinha que repor esses 100 milhões de dólares. Ou ele precisava esperar até que ele, na FTX, conseguisse ganhar, lucrar 100 milhões de dólares. Acontece que o cara perde assim, ele não quer ganhar ao longo de um ano. Ele quer ganhar assim. E quando ele vai tentar ganhar assim, ele acaba perdendo mais 100 milhões de dólares ou eventualmente mais 500 milhões de dólares e aí ele vai ter que recuperar mais 500 milhões de dólares e é assim que ele perde 10 bilhões de dólares sabe por quê? porque ele não usava stop ele não usava stop mostra, responde para mim no vídeo que ele não usava stop do you use stop loss orders or, or not basically? no, and the reason is basically that if you have an automated or not formally speaking, if you have a 24 seven automated trading system with 24 seven manual oversight, then you don't need to place a stop loss order because instead you can just wait till things would get to that trigger price and then decide whether to execute that, that order, whether to send that order. You know, the main point of a stop loss is basically automation is that it, you know, even if you don't have trading bots yourself, you can like outsource a particular trading strategy to the exchange, so to speak. Um, and so that's, that's a big advantage of it. Um, and that's that's a lot less necessary if, if you have, you know, an automated trading firm. Um, so we don't use, you know, stop losses uh, or take profits literally, although, you know, there might be trading strategies that look kind of like that, but, you know, instead are just mechanic by, you know, our automated systems or traders choosing to close down a position, you know, if and when it gets to some levels. Now there's another thing that's very important. Não adianta você falar que você vai colocar stop. Cara, stop tem que estar tá colocado. Tem que estar tá lá. É, mas eu nem sempre tive essa ideia, né? Nem sempre fiz isso. Lá para trás, quando eu comecei a operar mais pesado, tinha um corretor. Na época em que a gente ainda não colocava as ordens no pregão, você tinha que ligar para o seu corretor e passar a ordem para ele. Bem, eu estou chegando aqui na FAMI, escritório do meu querido amigo Lúcio Fada Soares, que fundou a Enfoque comigo, para ele contar a história para vocês. Como é que foi quando eu saquei que não podia mudar stop nem que a vaca tussa? Lúcio, só vim aqui para te amolar um pouquinho, para você contar a história de quando eu mandei uma carta para você, lembra? Sim, eu lembro. Porque nós estávamos, como é que é mesmo? Nós, eu estava operando e daí o que acontecia mesmo? Conta para mim. Às vezes você alterava o, o stop. Eu? Sim, você. E aí você formalizou uma, uma orientação dizendo que não aceitasse mudanças de stop depois de feita a, a posição e que era para você me ligar apenas e tão somente para me comunicar que Foi. eu tinha sido estopado Isso. nunca para dizer oi boa Isso. tarde o tempo tá bonito Isso. não tá chegando aqui perto do seu stop Isso, não era para avisar quando estivesse aproximando stop nenhuma possibilidade de ser tocado no stop era para ligar somente depois de executada a ordem que de stop. Sabe por quê, moçada? Porque eu, quando ele me ligava, eventualmente eu falava, não, deixa comigo que eu vou assumir o controle da nave aqui. Isso. Aí 20 execuções desastrosas depois que eu acabei perdendo, muito mais do que eu perderia se eu tivesse eu perdendo ou deixando de ganhar, né? 
é, do que se eu tivesse sido executado pelo Stop, eu mandei a carta para o Lúcio. Perfeitamente. Why don't you take us back if you could to when you first got the call from Sam and you first had a chance to look at the books? Uh, it was pretty clear pretty soon that there's you know um, there's misappropriation of user funds. Um, the user funds are gone. Uh, at that point, um, it's clearly that he lied to his users, his investors, his VC investors. Um, his employees. At that point, I thought I couldn't, like, whatever data that's in the data room, we couldn't trust anymore. Binance call, is it your uh, concurrent? Binance? You know, yeah. it's, it's an interesting mix, right? Like, there are ways in which we're collaborators, there are ways in which we're competitors. It's, you know, the answer is messy and it depends on the context. And, you know, that's sort of how crypto is in a lot of ways right now. Yeah. But one thing that I will say above everything else, we try really hard to make more friends and enemies. And, you know, even if we're just clearly a competitor with someone, we want to find ways to work together if we at all can. And we want to avoid sort of a, a you know, zero sum mindset because, you know, fundamentally, sure, you can fight over, you know, who gets some some pieces of some winnings. But, um, but you know, you can also work together. And, you know, they're, they're often really big gains from collaboration. The losses that you get are these sort of third order effects that they help someone who might take some volume some, from some other people. And maybe some of those people are you. But, you know, the much bigger effect is just there might be ways to do great things for both of you together. Então, moral da história, os stops sempre, sempre, sempre. Não, peraí, você não entendeu? Vai lá agora e bota stop, cara. Então, moçada, isso tudo aqui para dizer para vocês que o Sam não quebrou porque ele perdeu os primeiros 100 milhões de dólares. Ele quebrou quando foi querer recuperar o prejuízo que ele tinha tido. É isso aí. Te vejo na próxima. Tchau. Se você tem interesse em receber as recomendações de compra de criptoativos no ParBTC e o SDT da nossa equipe, acesse faustobotelho.com.br ou utilize o QR Code aparecendo na tela. Você também poderá automatizar todas as compras, mudanças de stop e liquidações através do nosso parceiro N. Em caso de dúvidas, entre em contato com atendimento.faustobotelho.com.br. Para analisar e negociar ativos na mesma plataforma que o Fausto, acesse enfoque.com.br. Deixe o seu like, compartilhe e inscreva-se no canal para receber notificações das próximas lives.